Hello, and welcome to Waveform Science. I'm Jeff Hagen. I have gotten a hold of an early model of Bluetti's PS70 solar generator. Tonight we will answer the question of what it is, where it came from, and if it is worth the money. You also see Bluetti's EB70S model in the table behind me. Both of these are 700 watt hour units, and we will make some comparisons of the two devices along the way. First off, where did the solar generator come from? This is kind of an odd product since Bluetti has never actually sold this device directly to the public. Bluetti's parent company in China is Shenzhen Power Oak New Energy. Power Oak makes solar generators both for themselves and for other companies with the Bluetti trade name is one of their names for their products. Power Oak has the PS70 available to order for about $500 each with a minimum order of 10 units. So you can get it, but for it from them. Bluetti's actually only ever sold this device to people who have pre-ordered the AC500. Their price for this device is $99, which is an extremely attractive price for a 700 watt hour unit. So what do you get for $99? Let's take a closer look at this device and see what you wind up getting for the money. The physical size of the device is 13.7 inches by 6.8 inches by 9.2 inches. Build is ABS plastic all around. We have the ports on the front. We have an air inlet on the front side here, Blue Eddy logoing. It comes in both the blue color and a black is available. On the back of the device we have of course the flashlight and an input output fan. Other side we've got the other air inlet. And back to the front, we're looking at the controls. Got a nice handle on top, be able to move it around. My postal scale gives me a weight of 18 pounds, 1.5 ounces for the entire device. Electrical specs, this has a 720 watt hour, 14 volt, 50 amp hour battery inside. It is a lithium ion battery not lithium iron phosphate like most of Blue Eddy's other devices. The lithium ion battery will have less weight but also less cycles than a comparable lithium ion phosphate battery. The inverter in here is a pure sine wave 500 watt inverter. We have a USB type C connector. This is advertised as 45 watts. We have two quick charge ports two regular USB ports, two 12 volt 10 amp rated 5521 barrel connectors, and by the way this is 10 amps for both of them, they're rated at 5 amps each, and a 13 volt 10 amp cigarette lighter port output. We have four AC outlets, and by the way these grounding plugs on here, these are not connected to anything in here. This, connect, this port here is not connected to that port there, that's just a hole in the front of the piece of plastic so that you can plug a grounded plug into the front. There is one and only one input on the front of the device. That is a 12 to 45 volt 10 amp input. In the box with the device, you get a AC power adapter. This AC adapter does not have a fan in it, and we'll go over the use of this in a little bit. It comes with a MC4 cable for solar panels, and it comes, of course, with the cigarette lighter adapter. The cords here are not the same size as a standard Blue Eddy 8mm connector. Most everything Blue Eddy makes, they use an 8mm port right here. This particular Blue Eddy uses a DC6530 connector, also known as a 6.5mm by 3.0mm DC barrel jack. So this is a different size than most of your other Blue Eddy devices. Now it does come with the right cables, so you don't have to worry too much about finding them right away. In the off chance that you break the original cable, you lose the original cable, something happens to it, you can easily find uh, 5521 to DC 6530 connectors. Those converters are available on eBay. Uh, they'll probably also be available on Amazon as soon as these devices start shipping in more bulk. So that's available as well. The controls on the PS70 are a little bit different than what you're used to if you're using other Blue Eddy devices. This is a press and hold. So first off, it has a power button, 
which is different from most other Bluetti devices that don't have a dedicated power button. So if I press one of these buttons without pressing power first, nothing happens. They just don't do anything. So you have to remember to press the power button first and hold, press and hold, it will power on. We have the five position LED, as we do on many of the older Bluetti devices. We have input, DC output, and AC output. So in order to turn one of the sides on, I have a separate switch for USB, for DC, and for AC. To turn one on, it's press and hold, which is different from most other Bluetti devices where it's just a single press to turn the screen on and a second press to turn the device on. This requires a press and hold. I can turn on the AC side, the DC side separately. That's these three ports and the USB separately. There is no menus or anything else that can be configured in this device. It's either on or off. That's all there is to it. Very, very, very simple user interface. Power brick for the PS70. When you give power to it, it turns green to start with when it is charging. In a second, it turns red. And then similar to other Blue Eddy devices, it turns green again when it's done charging. The charging rate on this display, we see 160 watts. What we see actually coming out of the wall socket is more like 170, 180 watts. So the AC adapter is not that efficient. Now there is a warning on the side of the AC adapter. Caution, maybe come hot. By the way, they're not joking. It gets pretty hot at the end of a charging cycle. As far as how long does it take to charge from dead to full, we're looking at about four hours and 46 minutes is what I measure. Compared to an EB70S, it does charge a little bit slower. And the charging profile itself has a little bit more of a curved tail on the end of it, which is completely normal for lithium ion batteries. Uh, lithium ion phosphate has that very distinct fall off a cliff at the end of the charging rate. That's, again, completely normal for the EB70S. So it charges a little bit slower than the EB70S, but it is what it is. It's a much, much cheaper model, but it does charge absolutely from the AC charging brick. Next question is, how fast does it charge from solar? So I've got the PS70 here hooked up to my big DC variable power supply. This is a 35 amp supply that has a much higher voltage rating than this device can take. So we're going to be able to feed it as much as it will take. I've got two different meters here. Meter on this side. This is monitoring input voltage directly from the power supply. This meter over here, I know it says volts DC, but it's really measuring input amperage. I've got a clamp meter hooked up to this. It's going to tell me how many amps are being pulled externally. And we're going to compare that to what it says on the screen of the device as it tells us how fast it's going to charge. So let's give it a little bit of voltage here. First, let's go up to car power supply level. Let's get it to about 13.8 volts. 14 overshot it a bit. There we go, 13.7. That's close enough. Okay, so we are charging at 129 watts as displayed internally. However, down here you can see we're pulling 10.3 amps. So 10.3 amps, that is more than 10 amp power supply from a cigarette lighter can typically handle. Most cars in the United States are rated between eight amps and 10 amps on their cigarette lighter port input. It does come with a cigarette lighter cable. So it comes in the box with one. But before you use that, you need to check your car because if you've got an eight amp rating, on your cigarette lighter port and you're pulling 10.3 out of it, you may have a problem. So check your car first before you use that cigarette lighter port. Now it will charge off 13.8 volts. There's no problem with the charging voltage. It's simply the limitation is gonna be the cigarette lighter port in your car. If you've got an eight amp one in your car, most of Blue Eddie's other devices stop at eight amps. This one stops at 10. So be careful about that. Now let's bump up the voltage here to about 18 volts. That, by the way, is the fan in the PS70. So this is about what you're going to get out of a single solar panel. 
We are now seeing on the screen, we're pulling 172 watts. We're still at 10.4 amps, 18 volts. So we're pulling a little bit over 180 watts out of the panel to get 172 watts displayed on the screen. Not uncommon for these displays in the screen to be not all that accurate. That's why I have some extra meters here. Let's go up to about 24 volts. That's a bit bigger panel there. So now we're already down to 9 amps. So we've already hit the charging limit here. 209 watts. By the way, 209 watts is as fast as this is going to charge. That's the max input. So 24 volts, 9 amps, 209 watts. As we increase the power even further, now we can go up to 45 volts. What you're going to see as the voltage goes up, the amperage goes down. And the wattage stays about the same, 208 volts. Or 208 watts, excuse me. Volts. Let's get us up to about 45 volts. There we go. Now we can go a little bit higher than 45 volts. Let's see where it stops. 46. 47. 47 volts, right at about 47 volts is where we get a charging error. So it does have a little bit of a protection in there and it kicks off at 47 volts. Here is what the charging graph looks like. Now notice this graph, this doesn't have time on it. This isn't how fast it charges. This graph is instead measuring how quickly it will charge at a given voltage. So if you're gonna decide to try to get a solar panel up to it, you're gonna need at least 22 volts out of your solar panel in order to hit the max charging rate. So if you're looking for solar panels, look for something that'll give you 22 volts at max power, so VMP of 22 volts or greater. Maximum charge rate test. This is a 500 watt rated inverter. Let's make, first make sure we can get 500 watts out of it and then see how far we can push it. So let's apply a bit of a load and the fan kicks on almost immediately. 427 watts. Let's push it up and see how far we can get. 460, 480, 490, 530, 540. My screen kicked off here. Yeah. it off. Let's try to hit that one more time. Put it back on, clear the air. Turn the AC side back on. Back up to 540. 580. 600 watts, 640 watts roughly, right before it kicks off. So yeah, this is definitely a 500 watt rated inverter and we can push it a little bit further than that. Very nice. Next, let's do the max draw DC side test. This port is rated 13 volts, 10 amps. Appears to be regulated at 13.3. Start pulling power here and see if we can get 10 amps out of it. 2 amps, 3 amps, 5 amps, 8, 9, and we get to 10 amps. There we are, 10 amps. Seems to handle 10 amps just fine. 
Although we've dropped down to 12.4 volts, that would still be acceptable to almost all devices. Let's see if we can push it any further. Don't really want to push it too much further because of the limitation on the cigarette lighter port. And we get an error right around. Let's reset that real quick. Figure out exactly where the maximum is. amps right around 11.3 amps is where we get an error so you can push it a tiny bit beyond the limits but not that much beyond the limits it is a cigarette lighter port after all next we're going to test the 5521 barrel jacks there are two of them here i've got them plugged in parallel to this tester you can see i swapped out the tester with a hardwired one because you can't run 10 amps through a single 5521 barrel jack, but you should be able to run 10 amps through two of them. So let's see if we can get the full 10 amps. Four, six, 8.5, 10.4. Let's see if it cuts off right around 11. That's what the other one did. 11.2, 11.3, yeah, 11.3. So pull 11.3 amps, and what voltage did we get right there? Set it. For to reset, there we go. And we're at 11.8 volts, so that's about a usable voltage as well. So very nice. So you, this will have no trouble whatsoever running fridges or other 12 volt appliances that you would take camping. Very nice. Next we have the USB port test. We're going to use a meter here and we're going to determine whether or not the USB ports are at what they actually say they're supposed to be. So first the regular plain old USB ports. Reset the device. Let's have it do a scan. See what this support device supports. So we have 2.4 amp, regular USB is supported. And give it a second. It looks like nothing else, just regular old USB. But it is a 2.4 amp port, so that's reasonable. Okay, next, quick charge ports. Let's see what's in there. So we've got Quick Charge 2 and Quick Charge 3. We can do up to 12 volts, it looks like. Yeah, up to 12 volts. We cannot do Quick Charge 2.0, 20 volts, but it's an 18 watt device, so that doesn't surprise me. And it doesn't support USB PD. Next, Type-C port. Got the same connector here, let's plug it in the USB Type-C. Let's see what this supports. So we do not support quick charge over the USB PD port. So that's not supported at all, it looks like. Let's see if it finds USB PD. Yes, it does. PD 2.0, 45 watts. Very good. Now let's jump into that particular setting. Trigger it for, that was quick charge. Trigger and power delivery. And that's what it supports right there. So we've got 5 volts, 3 amps, 9 volts, 3 amps, 12 volts, 3 amps, 15 volts, 3 amps, and 20 volts, 2.25 amps, which is in fact pretty standard for a 45 watt USB PD port. So this is going to charge pretty much anything at any of the power delivery 2.0 spec standards up to 45 watts. So most smaller laptops, phones for sure, tablets for sure, battery packs for sure. It's a pretty standard USB PD port, and it is what it advertises itself to be. So, very good. Next, does it support pass-through charging? 
We know already that this does not have a UPS feature, so there's no point to even test for that. It doesn't have one. But does it have pass-through charging? And it better. It's got Blue Eddie's name on it. It would very much surprise me if it doesn't. So can we charge it and discharge it at the same time? So we have 426 watts of load on it, pretty close to the max load, but not over. Can we charge it while it's discharging? And of course we can. So pass through charging, works just fine. No problems at all with that. Voltage under load test. Let's give it some power here. This is DC, let's switch to AC here. 110 volts with no load on it. Not configurable, by the way. You can't get 120 out of this device. Put about 500 watts of load on here. There, we're at about 500 watts, and we're still rock solid at 110 volts, as expected. Next, we have the sine wave under load test. Power on, we have a nice clean sine wave as it powers up. We are at 493 watts. Let me remove the load. We're now all the way down to zero watt load. Nice clean sine wave. Now you've seen the sine wave under load test, probably seen that at a few different places. However, we have a new one for you today. We're going to be looking at the total harmonic distortion measurement generated by a meter. What total harmonic distortion means, in simple terms, is the percentage of the AC sine wave that is not 60 Hertz. Now you're never going to have a perfect 0% total harmonic distortion value. It's impossible in the real world to make a perfect sine wave. So this meter is going to tell me what the value is. First off, straight out of the device with no load on it, we're looking at 1.3% total harmonic distortion. And you can see we have a very clean sine wave on the device. Now when we apply a load, the total harmonic distortion is going to get worse because of course it will. And now at 427 watts, all the way up to maximum. 508 watts. There we go. Now my total harmonic distortion, you can see the sine wave looks exactly the same. No difference there. But my harmonic distortion has gone up to 2.5%. 2.5%, by the way, is a very, very good reading. Unplug my distortion meter and plug it into my Pacific Gas and Electric here. Straight off from the wall. My Pacific Gas and Electric is giving me 5.2, 5.3. So even with a max load on this inverter, it's still cleaner than the power that's coming straight out of my wall. Although it is at 110 volts, not 120 volts. There's a very small number of devices that are actually going to care about that. Next, full capacity discharge test. So here we take the AC inverter and we're going to discharge it all the way down to zero at various levels. So why do we do more than one level? Because efficiency is not a constant across loads. This isn't just a battery we're measuring, we're also measuring the overhead of the actual device itself. Therefore, we have to account for that in our measurement and take multiple measurements. So we're also comparing this to the EB70S. It has a very similar battery capacity. EB70S, um, we get 40% uh, to start with at 7.5 watts. PS70 is 42%, virtually the same. As we move our way up, we can see that the EB70S is quite a bit more efficient than the PS70. PS70, when we start looking at about 150 watt load, instead of getting 4 hours and 10 minutes that we get on the EB70S, we get 3 hours and 49 minutes. So eh, about 10 minutes less. So not a huge difference, but in percentages, instead of looking at 87%, we're looking at 79%. In fact, nowhere along the graph on the PS70 do we break 80%. So we're less than 80% efficient the entire time. Uh, by the way, at the full 500 watts, we are able to do a 100% to 0% discharge, an entire discharge of the battery, without the device hiccuping. 
It takes one hour, one minute, and 50 seconds to do that, giving us 71% efficiency at max draw. Uh, the EB70S, by the way, my model, was not able to do a draw at 750 watts, so I couldn't even do a full draw at 800 watts. It is an older model, not terribly surprised there, but it does not do a full capacity discharge. It gives up after uh, 13 minutes and 29 seconds. For DC discharging, the PS70 is similar. It's a little bit less efficient than the EB70S. If we look at it at 7.5 watts, in other words, about what a cell phone draws, the PS70 can do that for two days, 11 hours, and 17 minutes. By the way, that's 24 hours a day. Uh, there is no cell phone in the world that can actually take that much charge. This was hooked up to a constant load. But the uh, PS70 can do it instead of 11 hours. It can do it for 22 hour, two days, 21 hours. Both of those are way less than 80% efficiency. 73% uh, efficiency, by the way, for my EB70S at 7.5 watts. Um, we move up the chain and we get to uh, 20 watts. Again, PS70 less efficient all the way throughout the entire curve. Now, you'll notice I have a 150 watt number for the PS70 on DC. You can't get 150 watts out of the 5521 barrel plugs. Those are limited to 10 amps. You can't get 150 watts out of the cigarette lighter port. That's limited to 8 amps. Um, just can't get that much power out of it. How did I do that? I was taking some of the power out of the USB-C port. So I was doing 100 watts from the 5521 barrel jacks and uh, 45 watts out of the uh, Type-C port. I pushed the barrel, the uh, 5521s a little bit further to get up to 150 watts. And did the same thing, by the way, on the PS70. That one has two USB-C 100 watt ports, so I was actually able to pull 300 watts DC out of that uh, for, uh, for one hour and 49 minutes. By the way, it did complete that test entirely, so you can pull 300 watts out of it. But the entire chain, in fact, even at 300 watts, we have 76% efficiency on the EB70S, and we have 75% efficiency on the PS70 at half that wattage rate. So the EB70S is going to be a much better device for DC. How much better? About 10% better. Now, that being said, it's five times the cost. It's a $500 unit versus a $100 unit. Is that price difference worth it to you? That's the question. So the PS70, is it worth it? Well, in comparison to the EB70S, it is about 10%, 15% less efficient has a smaller inverter, a few less outputs, the USB-C port's a little smaller. It's also one-fifth the price. Main difference between the two, the main, main difference is the battery chemistry. The EB70S has a lithium iron phosphate battery. That's going to give you 12 years, maybe 15 years if you're real lucky, of shelf life before the battery starts having trouble. Lithium ion battery, you're going to get Four years, maybe six years, so about half the shelf life on the PS70. As far as cycle count, lithium iron phosphate batteries tend to look at about 3,000, 3,500 cycles to 80%. Lithium ion batteries, it does not say in the packaging what the actual specs are for the batteries that are in there. That's not in the manual, and I wasn't able to find it from Bluetti either. So I'm going to guess probably industry standard is about 500-ish cycles on a lithium ion battery. That's probably what you're looking at. So if you're looking for a high cycle device, definitely you want the more expensive EB70S. That's why they're selling it for $500 plus dollars, while the uh, PS70 is $100. Bucks. However, there are use cases for this device. Um, it's almost as good at one-fifth the price. Um, I did put in an order myself for a non-evaluation unit. This one's an evaluation unit. I put in an order for one myself because I do have an AC500 that was just delivered. And that's going to go to a family member for Christmas who doesn't really know whether or not they want a solar generator. They kind of have an idea that they might use it for a few things. They kind of want to kick the tires, figure out whether or not it's a good thing. And I'm not willing to dump 500 bucks into a Christmas gift for somebody that isn't sure whether or not they're ever going to use the thing. But at the $100 price point, it's a great device for that. And they're probably going to sell a bunch of these for that use case. 
Now, the other thing that I've heard from Bluetti, this is not going to be a standard model. It is unlikely that we're going to see the PS70 become a model where they start selling it versus their other devices on a regular basis. They wound up with a bunch of these. They're going to be selling them off, and they're selling them off at uh, very attractive prices. So if you've ordered one, I believe the ordering is either about to end or has already ended, depending on when you watch this video for the AC500. If it has already ended, the window in order to order a PS70 would have already closed. So this video tells you what you're going to get if you've already decided to order one. If that window is still open and you can still get one, maybe the video will help you decide whether or not that's the right thing for you. As always, a bit of a disclaimer, I do not make any money from my reviews the products that you see here, the PS70, the EB70S, the PS70 I won in a Blue Eddy contest, the EB70S was provided as an evaluation unit. I do not take any money from Blue Eddy. They don't pay me at all. I don't work for them. I do work in tech, but I work elsewhere in tech. I don't make my money from solar generators. I don't do this for money. I don't get paid at all for this. I make the videos because I enjoy making them. If you enjoyed making them, please subscribe to the channel or send me a like. Either way. And thank you for watching.